now that you know why we're talking multi-channel, let's get into the nitty gritty of the hows of becoming a multi-channel. So as I mentioned, there's a lot that we could cover. So what we've done is we've distilled it down to three main elements that hopefully you can go away action today, tomorrow, maybe this week, or sometime super soon. So Dan, if you go to the next slide, please. So the first element of a multi-channel journey that we think is very vital is that multi-channel means your journey should be more than just reading. So, you know, we do audits a lot of the time with a lot of supporter journeys and we build out a lot of new supporter journeys as well. And we see this time and time again when we do our audits is that a lot of people are just having a read email, click through to a page. Sometimes you have video, but it's a read email, click to watch a video, read email, go to my donation page, read email, do this. So, you know, a lot of what we're seeing is just the same type of content, which is read email, read more, watch read for video, read story, donate. And what happens and what we've seen in our audits and as we see the journey as it progresses over six months to two years or even over 28 days, asking people to just read your emails and then click to your site to read more and take the same action, it gets pretty dull quickly. It's not really a good user experience. Um, and what we've seen is that it actually leads to a decline in engagement overall. So it leads to a decline in open rates if they know they're just doing the same thing. Click-through rates will suffer a lot if all they're doing is reading more. And so we'll just do engagement. Um, so, you know, it's, as we've talked about in the beginning, it's about being supporter-centric. It's about learning where your supporters are and how they engage with content and what kind of content they like. Like I said, if you think about yourself, not everyone consumes, not everyone likes reading. Not everyone likes reading long emails. Everyone likes reading short emails. Not everyone likes reading emails. Some people like watching videos. Some people listen to podcasts when they go on their walk. So it's really about shifting away from the traditional read more, take an action and making your journey more than just reading. Um, and you know what? You're, you are all storytellers here. This is the what we do as um, not-for-profits, we tell stories. And you guys have a lot of different ways that you tell your stories, not just in reading. And I've seen this when we've done audits and when we've built out journeys. You guys have, you know, amazing videos, a lot of really good video content. You guys have awesome galleries. You guys have rollicking Facebook and Instagram posts where people have commented and shared um, or really, you know, incredible images you have downloads, a lot of you guys have resources, you guys have community groups. Um, some of you do actually have podcasts as well. You have heaps of surveys, I'm sure that you're not using or you can build one easily. So there's a lot of content that you guys have and different content types. So you really should be using it. Um, and this is really some, something super simple you can take away today, you can take it away after this session straight away and you can look across your different channels and you can look at what content you have that's more than just reading where you share that content, where it's most effective on what channel and how you can integrate this into the comms journey that you currently have or a new one that you might be building. So, you know, it also really saves you a lot of time writing long emails and building out new landing pages and building out new copy, but it also gives your supporter a better experience because they're, you're able to learn and see and share different content in different ways across different channels rather than just email to your landing page. So Dan, do you want to take us through the first examples for this, please? Absolutely, yeah. So um, Are You OK is, um, is an organisation we work with uh, a lot and you probably know a lot about them. They just had their Are You OK Day for 2021, which went really, really well. Uh, and they do a great job of producing content. They've got a lot of content to work with, uh, some really incredible stories from people who share with them. But then they you know, do a great job of, of turning that around and producing a whole heap of different types of content across different channels. And as Mum just said, you know, this means this thing gives you an opportunity to share your story in different ways. And are you okay to do that with podcasts and videos and resources to download, blog articles, quizzes, they have a shop, um, which is great. But you know, this this is a great example of, of sort of what's possible, um, but that's not to say that you need to have all of these different things. So if we look at an example, uh, I've been working with Are You Okay on a, a new onboarding journey for their supporters, uh, and this will be going live quite soon. And what it has is, it starts with a, a relatively typical email journey. So on the left there, we've got a, a screen grab from MailChimp, and you can see a pretty standard automation flow send an email, wait a few days, send an email, wait a few days. 
Um, but what we've done is marry this up with some Facebook ads that um, sort of complement and sort of expand on, on the, the EDM content. So using Zapier, uh, an integration tool to get MailChimp to talk to Facebook, uh, we have four different uh, Facebook posts that uh, are scheduled to go over the 28-day journey. And Zapier moves people through the different ad sets, so they move into different audiences automatically as they progress through the email journey. Uh, so you can see in the middle there, we've got phase one, add one, add two, and add three, uh, and different customer lists, get different custom lists that... Um, that they move through. So for ad one, they see this video that you can see a screenshot of, and that video is a supporting message for the EDMs in those first weeks around the idea that one conversation can change your life. Having meaningful conversations can really change the world. Then we've got some video content that ties into that. And then ad two is a resource page that clicks through to tips and videos and downloads, uh, which is more practical and ties in with the EDMs in that seven day phase. Uh, and then add three links through to a quiz. Uh, so it's interactive. It's as Mumta was saying, it's more than just reading. It's, uh, it's, it's not a passive interaction. And uh, that supports the, the EDMs that are in that stage more uh, practical with tips. And then in the, uh, the, fourth, the fourth stage of this uh, Facebook journey, the, the last ad is encouraging them to get involved in different ways and advertises um, different um, fundraising options or other ways to sort of take their involvement beyond a supporter and become a participant in some way. And that, again, that's supporting the calls to action in the, in the, uh, the fourth EDM, uh, sorry, the fourth phase of the EDMs. So you can see how they tie in together and they're not duplicating content but they're, they're talking to people across different channels, um, getting people where they might not be. If they're not on email, hopefully we're getting them on Facebook and vice versa. But we're also keeping the message front of mind. They read an email, then the, you know, the frequency of the, uh, the Facebook ads means that they're seeing that messaging, hopefully one or two or three more times in that, in that week. And it's all tying together to, to lead up to the organization's goal of hopefully getting them to participate further but also um, meeting the meeting the supporters where they are and, and giving them a you know a really positive experience with the with the brand. Uh, and we also did something with uh, peer to peer audience. Are you okay? And Mumta can uh, talk to this one. Thanks, Dan. Um, so you know this is another um, supporter journey that we a short one, a shorter one, not like a longer one, but this was for a peer-to-peer -peer event that we ran this year for them. Um, and it was really about thinking about our participants. And, you know, if you guys do run peer-to-peer -peer events, you know that not your participants are going to read your emails and you need, if you want them to get to them to fundraise, you need to kind of hit them with different messages across different channels. So, you know, we thought about what content do we have? What kind of channels do you think would engage people with and where can we share this story so we built out you know a short nurture supporter journey for our participants specifically and we used um you know traditionally emails obviously we used some we had some engagement sms's um to during the um during the event to keep the keep us top of mind um, we had triggered emails we also built um, social ads to run to our specific fundraiser list. Um, we had social organic to tie in with that, obviously. And we also built out a close Facebook group. So Dan, if you go to the next slide. So this is how the content all came together. So it was really about what content made sense across different channels um, and where were our fundraisers and where could we actually target them to get them to you know, engage with the event and give more. So we did use email. Um, obviously but what we did see is the open rates decline significantly as the thing went on so you know we started at maybe 30 percent and then by email three week three it was down to maybe 18 percent, and then it got a lot lower during week four so we naturally saw a decline and we compensated that by sharing our content across different channels so you know we had an instagram hashtag obviously so that's a lot more visual um sharing posts and building out you know this gallery of user-generated content to actually show people in action it, letting them share their content on there so that they, the fundraising ask is easier than it is sometimes an email sharing an email is not as easy we had a closed facebook group um you know where we created very specific content to this very 
a big group that I think we had like 200 in the end in there, but like these people were super engaged and we created curated specific content. We asked questions. We really interacted with them in this group. We got them commenting. We talked about content in different ways and we gave them more exclusive content because they cared about us enough to join the group and share their stuff. And then we also did some paid social stuff. So, you know, we had obviously a supporter pack that they were going to get if they raised X amount of dollars. But we also had a lot of resources that we wanted to encourage them to download as an afterthought after the event, including some of the resources that Dan talked about, like some of their guides on how to ask. Um, so, you know, we did paid social to custom audiences because we know social is the most place we got fundraising money from people. The referral traffic from Facebook was the highest. So we knew people were sharing there. So instead of just blasting them with emails, we were like, where can we actually curate content specifically across channels? We know they're sharing their page and they are. And, um, you know, most of the money did come from that. A lot of came from that paid social, a lot came from Facebook. So that's where they were. And we reappropriated the content for those channels to really, you know, give them a better experience and give them the content where we knew, knew they were going to be. So, Dan, if you go to the next slide. Yeah. So, you know, it's really important. The first step is to really think about your content and making it a lot more than just reading because that's what traditional email it is, reading, click through, look at this. Whereas multi-channel really gives you the opportunity to, you know, look at what the different channels offer and how what kind of format the content comes in there and how you can incorporate that when you know people are actually looking at different types of content, engaging with different types of content. So as Dan said in the Brubix example with IUK, sometimes it is about really gelling the content, the message together so you know making sure it, there's visibility and you have this if you're doing an appeal for example in that fundraising event um, you know you want to have a similar type of message cross channel but it's not always about blasting the same message across lots of different channels um, it really is about thinking as I said in the beginning about the channel what the content is and hitting the right supporters at the right time with the right content on the right channels so, you know, you want to make sure when you do think about a multi-channel journey and you think about incorporating different channels, you're adapting the content and you're using the right type of content for those channels as well. And you're making sure that you're adding value. So you're not just copying and pasting and, you know, whatever email cop content you're using or landing page content across those channels. It's about really using the content for those different channels. So that moves on to point two. Um, so the second element of a very effective multi-channel journey is it's more than just telling. So, you know, traditionally with, if you're using email, it's really just, I'm telling you my story. I'm asking you to click this, read this more. Um, you know, it's really just a one-way conversation generally. What multi-channel gives you the opportunity to do is really get more interactive with your supporters. Um, so, you know, using different content types, like I mentioned in the different channels, it really allows you to think about what they want to look at and think about what they enjoy engaging with. Um, and it really opens you up to have this real two-way conversation with your supporters. And you should you really you be using it to interact with your supporters. So first of all, it keeps your supporters really engaged. Like if you're using different types of content and you're making it a lot more interactive rather than just reading only, and you're putting it across different channels where you know they're going to engage with it more. Um, but it also gives you the opportunity, it's a two-way conversation, so you learn more about your supporters. So, you know, we all want to know more about what our supporters like and what they want to want to give to or what they want to sign up to. Are they going to donate? Are they going to participate in my event? Will they be likely to fundraise? Um, so, you know, making a, creating a multi-channel journey gives you that opportunity to get interactive and have a two-way conversation and really have more meaningful conversations and communications ultimately with your supporters. So, Dan, if you go to the next slide. So, this is an example with UN Women. Um, you might have seen it. We presented at FIA earlier this year as well. So, this was a supported journey that we did with UN Women. So, they had a bunch of leads that they got, um, and they wanted to know more about how will they convert? What do they like? Um, you know, they, it was a lead generation campaign, so it was more like, um, you know, brand new leads they didn't know anything about them they just wanted to got them in on a question and there were a lot a lot of leads a lot of interest but they didn't really know you know who they were and what they wanted to know about UN women or how would they likely interact with UN women what were they likely to give to 
So what we did was we used the content that we knew that they already had. So as we said in the previous section, you know, they had a lot of videos, they had a shop, um, they had obviously a donation, um, they had, you know, polls that they used, they had really engaging content. So we took that content and we decided to test and we decided to learn a little bit more about what our supporters do. And we made it very interactive. So we asked them to watch videos. We asked them to take polls. We asked them, will you donate? We asked them across social as well as email, will you donate or would you rather buy a gift? Um, you know, we had some passive emails where we didn't ask them to do anything. We just had a, can you read this in an email to find out if they engage with that? Um, so Danny, if you give it the next slide. And we built this journey across different channels to really test, you know, and some of the tests we were asked, what we wanted to learn about and some of the interactive points were, hey, you know, what kind of tone do you like? What kind of, do you give to inspiration or do you give when you're outraged? Um, do you like to give a donation or do you want to buy a gift rather? Are you more inclined to shop? Um, what things do you care about in the polls? So like what kind of stories do you want to tell? Do you want to hear? Do you like watching our videos rather than, you know, just reading an email? Do you like an SMS over an email? So this was the journey that we built out to really ask some of these questions from these leads that we wanted to qualify and learn more about. So then if you go to the next slide. So, you know, we built it on multi-channel because we wanted to know who are you, where do you live, what content do you like, and how can, how do you want to support us? Um, you know, we built it on email, we built it on SMS, we did have some direct mail, and we also did some Facebook ads. We ran six tests that we were really curious about, like, you know, th that was the interactive points, like, what can I learn as much as I can from the supporter so that I could give them the best experience. We tracked them and we scored them. And then from that test, we actually built out the winner. So we knew, you know, we used the content we had existing, we learned as much as we could, and then we built out the winning variations into a proper journey for the supporters based on what they've told us. Um, so if you go to the next slide then. So, you know, this is what we actually learned. We had questions around who are our supporters. So through using that content and getting interactive with it and asking those questions across different channels, putting a survey on, asking, changing the tone of the copy, we learned, you know, they're feminists, they're outraged by women's equality. What do they care about? You know, this is what they care about. And this is what they're most likely to give to or take an action on, stopping violence against women. And most importantly, what was the key question for us is what will our supporters give? How will our supporters give? Um, and, you know, what we learned from all the things that we shared with them and all the different content points and all the different interactive bits was that they wanted a personalization of content and ask. They didn't want just email. They wanted to be asked in other places, in other ways. Um, you know, they just, a lot of people gave to the shop rather than to the donation page. So we learned that some people don't like just to donate. They like to shop instead. So, you know, we could put them in that bucket. Um, you know, we learned what kind of tone they like, what kind of sender they like, whether they like watching a video um, in Facebook or whether they like watching um, a video on YouTube or whether they wanted to read more in the email or where they would likely click through to the landing page. So, you know, we got a lot of key learnings from this interactive process that we made it and we could adapt then the winning variations. We could adapt the copy and tone we know they like. We could adapt the platforms and the channels that they were engaging the most with and we could adapt those stories and content types to actually create a new journey to know we were going to hit the people, give the supporters what they wanted and get them to actually take an action. So, Dan, if you go to the next slide. So, you know, it's really important to be more, it's not just telling, it's really about learning and interacting. It's not just about, this is an email, read more about this, read more, please donate, or this is an email, sign up to this. This is a story, and it's good to still have those points and those content points, but, you know, it is getting multi-channel is being a lot more dynamic, having a plan, um, learning what you want to learn and know about them, pushing that content that you have existing already across the channels. With the UN Women example, we used what content they already had, so we didn't create brand new content. It was videos they already used, it was surveys they had, and pushing them across channels you already use, but also really reactively adopting and learning to improve your communication. So this is where we get to that supporter-centric point of view where it's, you know, you want to engage them because you want them to give more or you want to retain them or you want to um, get them to sign up to something. But, 
you can learn as much as you can by getting interactive and then you have to adapt the journey and you have to keep reactively learning from that to improve your comms to them so that you essentially give them a better support experience and that, you know, you get kind of what you are asking for.